Isn't it frustrating to work day after day in the gym trying to get your muscles where they're working to better for you so that you stop the aches and pains, only to wind up after months and months of hard work to have aches and pains that never seem to go away? And what happens usually at that point? Some professional will tell you, well, you're not 25 anymore. How frustrating is that? Every healthcare professional has their own version of how they think muscles work. There are even some so-called rules that we've heard our entire lives about muscles that seem to be true, and I mean true with a capital T, and yet when you start to examine the muscles of the human body, you realize that many of those so-called truths actually are not true at all. Today, I hope to clarify the confusion for you and give you some ideas that you can take with you back to the gym and back into your life to stop those aches and pains and help you live a more pain-free life. Welcome back to the Muscle Repair Shop. My name is Butch Phelps. I'm a functional massage therapist with a background in aging sciences, learning how we age physically and mentally. Today I want to talk about the five biggest mistakes that people make with their muscles. With my stretch and release technique, one of the things that I have learned over the years is that most of the so-called rules that people talk about with muscles are really lies in most cases. In fact, like I said in my intro, most people work month after month after month only to wind up feeling either in more pain or no better off than they did when they started. Yes, they may look good, but the pain is usually still there. So today I want to start with the five biggest mistakes that people make with muscles. So let's get started. Here's number one. Pulling muscles too hard when stretching. The first mistake that people make when they're stretching is that they have the visual in their head of pulling taffy apart. And it sounds great because you're talking about stretching something apart. But the idea is that if you're trying to pull the muscle apart, you're under the assumption that the muscle actually has chosen to fight back with you. The muscle would have to have a brain to be able to make that choice, number one. And we, only, we all know we only have one brain in our head or in our whole body, and that's in our head. So for the muscle to fight back, there has to be a reason. Well, if you're feeling any discomfort or pain at all, as you're pulling that muscle as hard as you can, the brain senses danger. And when it does that, it starts to contract the opposing muscle, trying to stop the pain in your body. So what's the right way to do that? When you are bringing your leg across your body, for instance, trying to stretch out your hip, the thing you want to do is put just enough pressure that as your leg starts to slowly fall over your body, you then start to sense and feel the muscles letting go in the hip. Not pulling apart, but just letting go. You allow the body to relax. You allow the, the leg to start to come over. The first thing here is don't worry about how far it comes. Everybody wants to tell you where to go. There's no competition in stretching. And the mistake people make is they want to show you that they can go from here to here in two seconds. That's a bicep curl. That's not stretching anything. It's a bicep curl. And many times people will pull too hard and cause the opposing muscles to spasm and they'll get a cramp. And then they'll stop because it'll start to hurt even more. The idea is that as you put it just enough, a little more than the weight of your hand and you start to pull the leg across your body, Feel the muscles in the hips. Be aware of what they feel like as they start to slowly let go. Now with your breathing at the same time and allowing it to let go, the muscles will slowly relax and let go. That's coming from the brain. Why? Because the brain then understands that this is safe. You're not going to die. You're not going to get hurt. But it's going to allow the muscles then to relax. Think of your muscles as the emotional fingers of the brain. When you get scared, the brain is what senses the fear or the danger, and then it has to recruit the muscles to tell you whether to run or to fight, right? 
When you start to create pain in the body by pulling too hard, what you're doing is, is you're setting off the fight or flight response. The brain recruits the muscles because it feels it's in danger, even though it's you stretching your own body, and it contracts the opposing muscles, and now what you're doing is strength training. And I know that's frustrating because for me, when I started out doing this, I thought, oh my gosh, for years I had been doing this over and over and over, and I could never be flexible. And I would even have professionals say to me, you're just not a flexible person. And I have to tell you, at 62 years of age, I am more flexible now than I was at 32 years of age, even though I'm 30 years older. So you too can do the same thing, but it's a matter of understanding how the brain works with the muscles. Now, in my stretch and release technique, I have people to repeat a stretch. They're gonna hold the stretch for five seconds at a time, and we'll get into that into the next one, but the repeating 10 times allows your brain the time that each time the leg or each time the arm comes over, the brain says, oh yeah, we didn't die, nothing tore, we're safe. And when the brain senses safety, the body relaxes. Number two, holding a stretch for long periods of time. Just like in number one, upholding it, pulling it too hard, when you hold for long periods of time and there's pain there, your brain is sensing, uh-oh, something is wrong, somebody's attacking me, something could tear, something could break, danger, 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 contract, 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 and the muscle, the opposing muscle will contract, and when it does that, now you're back to a bicep curl if you're pulling your leg, for instance, across your body. Every muscle in your body has a natural stretch reflex, and that is to protect you from getting hurt. Now, it takes about five seconds to engage that reflex. So the holding the stretch, like I do in my stretch and release technique, allows you the time to put the muscle in that position, breathe out, and learn to start relaxing the muscle so that the muscle can release and, and not feel danger. And so when the brain feels danger, it causes the muscles to contract. Again, think about the last time you were afraid. The last time you were afraid of something, your body was rigid, right? That rigidity came from the brain getting ready in the fight or flight response to decide, do I need to run from this danger or do you need to stand up and fight this danger? That's a contraction of muscles when you do that. Number three, muscle memory. This is a big one. Most people have the thought process in their head that their muscles actually has a memory. The reality of it is the memory comes from your brain. Your brain sets up a neural pathway that has learned which muscles that you can unconsciously recruit to stand up and maintain your balance. Take a step forward, open the door. You don't even have to think about that, right? But the thing is, is that the brain has unconsciously laid down a neural pathway that knows which muscles to recruit exactly at the right time so that we don't fall down. Muscle memory, if you think about the muscle itself having a memory, then that would mean every muscle in your body would have a brain. So you'd have somewhere between 650 and 700 little brains running around your body. Imagine the chaos that that would create. But here's an example to think about. My father, who passed away from having a stroke, when he had a massive stroke, lost the use of the right side of his body. The doctors explained that as damage to his brain caused that to happen. So think about that for a minute. If the muscles were able to have memory in themselves, how could the damage to the brain create a problem with the muscles in the body? Wouldn't they just remember how to do it? That's my point. It comes from the brain. And so the muscle memory is in your brain. It's not in your muscles. Number four, I feel weak. Don't I need to strength train? Now this is a huge mistake because especially for people as they age, as their body gets stiffer and stiffer and stiffer over time, they're 60, 70, 80 years old, they believe that the reason they can't get up out of the chair is that they need to increase the strength of their body. Sadly, many health professionals believe the same thing. 
But the truth, and it could be true sometimes, so don't get me wrong, it could be true. They could be so weak from sitting long periods of time that they do need strength training. But in most cases, what you'll find is that the sitting has caused the body to stiffen up. And when the body is stiff, it takes twice the energy to move that it did when it was not stiff. So when you take something that's lubricated and is moving around, even if you're talking about a metal mechanism and it's moving around, well, it takes far less power for the motor that's attached to it to move those pieces than if it has to, to pull and pull to try to get these pieces to move when they're very stiff. Well, the human body works the same way. When it's stiff like that, the joints get stiff, the spine gets stiff, the walking across the floor will take you twice as much energy today as it did 15, 20 years ago. So in a lot of cases, when I've worked with people in their 70s, 80s, and even 90s, once you start to free those joints up by softening those muscles and lengthening those muscles, then all of a sudden they can walk distances that they haven't walked in 20 years with far less energy. <laughs> Number five, and this is a big one. Muscles can't affect joints and discs in our back. I've even had a PhD in physical therapy argue with me about this, that the muscles themselves could not affect the joints by bringing the joints closer together. The truth of the matter is, is when you start studying the muscles and you realize that the muscles cross over the joints, as they get shorter and harder and tighter, it actually can bring the bones closer together. When it does that, it squeezes out the synovial fluid in the joint itself. I've worked with many people who are pre-surgical pre for a joint replacement, and while it didn't fix the damage to the bones, the actual stretching with my stretch and release technique literally gave them some spacing and gave them a little bit of relief to even delay some of those joint replacements for a few months, even up to a year. The thing is, is that understanding that if you have a damaged joint, the tighter the muscles are around that joint, the more pain you're going to endure. Go back to the brain. The brain's controlling those muscles. The brain feels the pain in the knee. Its first response is to contract the muscles around the area of pain to try to get that pain to stop. With the disc in your back, think of the spine. It's 26 individual bones with disc in between, rubberized disc in between, and so there's muscles on all four sides of the spine. The spine and the bones move from the muscles contracting and putting pressure on the bones to either support them to hold you up like standing up or sitting on a chair, or to move them so that you can walk or bend down and pick something up. The bones give you shape and they give you protection. The muscles give you movement, and they decide how those bones line up in your body. So if you get muscles on one side to be stiffer than muscles on the other side, you can have a spine that curves, you can have pelvises that get out of alignment. And we try to put those back in through chiropractic and, and other manipulations of the bones, but if we don't manipulate the muscles around it as well, those muscles could very well pull those bones right back out. And it becomes a futile activity. So the muscles can affect the joints and they can affect the disc in your body and can create some damaging results later on down in life. So understanding how the muscles work and how to get them to, to move properly so that your posture's in good places, your joints are lining up the way they're supposed to, and you can actually move your body better will aid you in so many things. Look, I was a person who used to weigh 315 pounds. And I can tell you from my experience that when you weigh that much and the inflammation that's in your body, you don't feel like moving. And the first step you have to take to be able to lose that kind of weight is to get your body back into moving again. And that begins with getting those muscles softer, which is pliability, getting those muscles lengthened, which is flexibility, so that as you start to move, now you can take advantage of the new strength that you're getting from strength training. Now you can take advantage of eating proper foods to get the inflammation to reduce in your body because now you feel like moving and doing something. Believe it or not, the inflammation from our foods and sitting around all the time actually can inflame our brain as well, which can affect our cognitive ability. 
So the, thing, the biggest thing I learned from my stretch and release technique is by putting these three protocols together to create the stretch and release technique by learning how to stretch my body correctly, learning how to make my body pliable through neuromuscular massage that I can do on myself, learning how my brain is affecting the reactions of my muscle and my body. When you do that, now your body and your brain is in, in working together can make you have a more healthier body and it can hopefully allow you to live longer with far less pain. So if you liked what you've heard today, please don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so that every Friday when these videos come out, you can be reminded again to do that. And don't forget to share this with any of your friends who you think it may help them. But for now, see ya.